and welcome back to this series of SQL practice problems. Today I'm going to be working on the introductory SQL practice problems. These are supposed to be really easy to solve and I'm going to be working through this and I guess as the, I will just uh, get to it right now. Okay. So last time uh, on the setup video we created the Norwin SPP database. So this is the this is the script that I use. It's modified with this addition here. The link of the repo for the GitHub repository or the um, what's the other one? The GitLab uh, repository are in the video description. So let's move on right into it. So back in the book, these are the introductory problems. The first one is called which shippers do we have? We have a table called shippers. Return all the fields from all the shippers. The expected results, and we see uh, three a table with three columns, and the shipper ID, company name, and phone. Okay, so without seeing the hand, I can easily see that this is the uh, warm-up exercise. It's not really a hard one. So first I'm going to create a I guess I should be making a new file here. Okay, a new SQL file. And this is going to be called intro, uh, practice problems. I guess I'm going to be calling them introductory problems. Okay. Introductory problems. Let's just use a lowercase. It's going to be and keep everything together with camel case. And let's call it a day. There we go. So, what are we going to do here? Uh, which shippers do we have? That's going to be. I wonder if I can actually select this text, text. Nice. Actually, going to, to copy all this. Let's see. Let's copy all this and paste it here. What happened? Didn't I just copy this? Control C. I guess I cannot just copy this. Maybe some DRN going on here. So, never mind. There, it's solved. Okay, I think I have a typo there. Yes, I do. Never mind. Let's fix the typo. I wonder if you can actually see this here. Okay, so I guess, I guess let's do a select statement. This is a very simple query here from the shippers. Oh wait, I'm not getting anything here. First I need to change my dialect to Microsoft SQL Server here. I made that mistake first. And secondly, I'm not seeing. Actually, I'm going to be typing here. Uh, use database. Use North Norwin SPP. And a go sentence. And now, okay, let's try to run this section here. A new, a new console should be opened. There we go. Now I'm using the Norwin SPP and I connected. Never mind. Now I should receive auto completion here. Select asterisk from shippers. I wonder why I'm not uh, actually getting. Oh, I guess it's because of this, I guess. Okay. Run shippers. So this should show me all the shippers. Okay. Let's try to do all that. And there we go. We got the expected result. I guess I should be setting here the name of the 
the number of the exercise. I guess this is being saved automatically. I'm not really sure. Let's try this. Oh yes, it's been saved automatically. I guess I don't need to do anything else. Okay, so let's get back to get and let's get the status. Uh, in this here, I may like to create a new branch just to keep track of what uh, what section of the book I am still on. So I'm going to be moving away from master. You don't need to follow along this section here. This is just for myself. I give, I should call. I only have the master branch here. Let's create a new one with a checkout dash b. So I'm going to check out to another to a different branch, and at the same time I'm going to be creating one because it doesn't exist. So I'm going to be calling introductory introductory problems and now i am on the in introductory uh, problems branch let's check out the status again i want to copy this let's add this file here we check the status and it is about to be committed let's let's clear the screen now let's commit with a message and it's going to be to the repo okay if i do a git log i can see my two commits from the previous master branch and i am right now on the introductory problem branch okay so let's keep going so this was the first one it was really easy I guess this is just to to make a little warm up. I don't think this is actually supposed to be a real problem here. So let's move on to the next one. Okay, uh, it says certain fields from categories. Okay, in the categories table, selecting all the fields using this SQL. Select asterisk from categories. We'll return four columns. We only want to see two columns, category name and description. Okay, let's do that. Oh, wait. Certain field from categories. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here, the first step is going to be to make a simple select. Select all the fields from, there we go, from the categories. If I run this one here, I get three fields here, okay? But yet, we only need to, I guess I'm going to be skipping this number here. I don't remember. Uh, we only want, it says it returns four columns, but I only see three. Never mind, this may be a typo. We only want to see two columns, category name and description. Let's do that. So here, uh, instead of using the asterisk sign here, I'm going to delete this character here, and I'm going to explicitly name the, the fields I want. In this case, it's going to be category name and separated by commas, the second field, or, or fields. In my case, it's going to be description. We execute again. And there we go. These are all the categories uh, from the categories uh, table here. Okay. Uh, I guess I can copy this because I'm going to use it. Again, if I do a get a status, it detects that the, this file has been changed. I'm going to Add the same file, and I'm going to, going to make a commit again. SQL. At this time, I'm not going to type in just add something. No, I'm going to be 
at a ver, let's insert what I copied oh wait it didn't copy the, anything okay so I want to say did I, I just copy this adds a solution to two certain fears and categories on the introductory problems SQL file okay let's move on let's move on to three problem number three okay we got a hint here what I did this is why that's exactly what I did okay number three sales representatives we like to see just the first name, last name, and hire date of all the employees with the title of self representative. Write a SQL statement that returns only those employees. Okay, so here is a combination. Uh, this is um, a series of exercises, and I, I can clearly see that this is building up. I actually using the previous exercise as a base for the next one. So here I'm going to begin with something similar to exercise number two, sales representatives. Let's do that first. Okay, so I'm going to begin first by identifying what table I'm going to be using. I, I would like to see, well, here we have the actual uh, field names. So let's do that. Select Thank you. And now we are going to type in these fields. First name, last name, and hire date, okay? First name, last name, and hire date from, uh, for not all the employees with the titles. Uh, so I get there is a, an employees table. See, yes. On. Employees. So so far so good. If I do this, I'm going to list every single employee. And yet this is not what I'm required to do. Uh, what I need to do next is to filter the results. Uh, allow me to move this one here down here, so it's so it can actually be read easily. And down here I'm going to add a where clause that will allow me to filter, uh, giving it uh, a, a filter option, I guess. Let's see. So it's asking me to return only the employees to for with what? Uh, with the title of self representative. Okay, so there is a field, I guess it's called title. There we go. And I can actually see here, I wonder if, if this is going to work. Let's try it. There we go. <coughs> I guess it actually works. Let me see what's the name of the title field. It's called title. There we go. This Self representative. This is the actual name, and yet, even though I have a, 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 a typo here, because my representative is with a lowercase r, and never mind that, it actually works. So that's good to know. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that anyway. So, here is the solution here. Okay, let's move on to the next exercise. Before that, I guess I should repeat my get that and git commit let's delete all this and let's go back here and copy the comment i'm doing this to keep track of where is uh, everything going on okay so as a solution to three self-representatives on introductory problems sql there we go if i do a git log let's do uh, one line so we can actually read it easier here we go 
I'm going to be adding the solution to the problems one after the other. So let's get going. So let's try number four then. This is actually getting interesting. Okay, what is number four? Cell representatives in the United States. Now we like to see the same columns as above, but only for those employees that both have the title of cell representative and also, I guess, are in the United States. In the United States, okay. So it's basically building up from the previous query here. I'm going to copy and paste the previous query, but first I'm going to put the title "Self Representatives in the United States." Okay, it's basically the same thing. Okay. There we go. So in this case, I'm going to be uh, selecting the self representatives. Let me actually modify. Uh, I may like to do the phone a little bigger so you can actually read it better i wonder if that's enough uh self representative uh, yet i want to see all those that are from the united states the first thing is let me check out the name of the field that stores the country i see a country field here so i may like to add um an anand uh, keyword here and and I'm going to be adding actually I'm going to move it down here so it's going to be easier to read there we go and okay actually I'm just going to give it back it's not that hard to read anyway and country there we go is I don't know but I may like to think that if I type in the same country name here this may work actually let's try it out nope United States is not is not call it this way so let me check out uh, the expected results the united states or oh, the field is not shown here so let's do something first because i currently don't know how the united states has been represented here let's look for the table these are all the data in the tables here the united states of america i'm going to copy this well it's usa anyway but the country is not united states it's usa so let's get back to the and you let's change the to USA and that shall be everything I need to do. There we go. The representatives in the United States. Okay, that's number four. Let's add it. Get add. Let's just change this to number four. On the United United States on through to prompts SQL. Let's move on. Okay, let's move on to oops. Well never mind. I'm going to, to fix that typo later. Okay. Number five. Okay, those are those orders placed by a specific. I guess I should change the size of the font so I can read it better here. There we go. Orders placed by a specific employee ID. By a specified employee ID. There we go. So what should we do? Show all the orders placed by a specific employee. The employee ID for this employee, Steven Buchanan, is five. Okay. So I'm going to be 
showing all the orders placed by a specific employee. Okay. So I guess there is an orders uh, here, an orders table, and one of the fields must be employee ID. It's an integer. Okay. So here I'm going to be doing a select statement. I guess I'm going to be showing all the fields, maybe? Show all the orders. Yeah, it doesn't filter. Uh, I guess all, all the fields are is okay. Let me see. From the employees. No, the orders. There we go. From orders. Where? Well, actually, I can do it in a single line. It's really short. Where employee ID is equals to five. And there we go. All the employee IDs are five. So it's the same. So I'm showing everything. Okay. Let's put that results. Uh, here is showing only the order ID and the order date. But I guess I just did it fine. Okay, let's. Let's continue. Sean resolve not included. 42. I guess I'm getting 42. Yes, 42 rows. Okay. And the employee ID integer. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's move on to sex. Let's save this on the repo. Let's delete the title here. Let's insert it and move on. Okay, what next? It's actually very fun. Suppliers and contact titles. In the suppliers table, show the supplier ID, contact name, and contact title for those suppliers whose contact title is not marketing manager. Okay, so someone doesn't like marketing managers then. Let's see. I can't blame them. <laughs> Suppliers and contact titles. Okay. Oops. Okay. So what I need to do is in the suppliers table show supplier ID and contact name and contact title. Okay. Let's do a select a statement. Supplier ID, uh, contact name and contact title. Contact name and contact title from the suppliers table and I need to filter in this case those who are not marketing managers so I'm going to add a where uh, clause here control title is not a marketing manager I wonder if I have a typo there. I think not. Okay, I guess I have mm, supplier contact marketing manager. Can I copy this? I'm getting really lazy now. What's this? Okay. I guess. No, oh, uh, it's not a typo. I guess uh, in SQL Server. I don't remember if is it must be something like this. Okay, let me see. This is this mean different. So not equals. There we go. So that's it. That was a little tricky, but never mind. Okay. Let's copy this one too. Okay, that introductory problems. There we go. There we go. 
Okay, let's move on. Number seven. Which is products with queso in product name. So we're having a Spanish name for now. Products with queso in product name. Okay. There we go. So I guess let's read. Uh, in the products table, we like to see the product ID and product name for those products where the product name includes the string queso. It says include, so I guess it, I'm going to be using a like statement here. Okay, so it's saying the select statement. It will be a product ID and product name from the products table where the product name eh, the the auto completion feature on on data grid is really great actually okay it's like and I and here I'm going to be adding these characters here for the queso let's try this queso cabrales queso manchego la pastora okay Yes, that's the actual answer. Let's just fix the typo. It doesn't really mean that much, I guess. As long as it works, I guess. Okay, it's the same thing. So here, let me explain the where clause and using the like uh, keyword in order for establish a, a string that uh, as the, the filter option here. If I only type the queso, it only it's only going to find out. Let's just try it out. Uh, it's not going to return anything because the the exact keyword queso is not the entirety of the field. So what I need to do is use these um, how do you call it? These characters, these percentage characters, and this this means that whatever string contains the word queso at the end and the string is a a wild uh, a wild mark character that means everything before this so there we go so whatever string contains the queso uh, substring inside is going to be working out so here we have two entries here and we're just done okay eight let's see who is eight i wonder if i can actually tie uh, let's not okay let's copy that okay mm -hmm. let's delete this entry shape insert i'm going to remove these double quotes because it's going to mess up with the double quotes on my commit statement okay so let's let's do that and uh let's continue on let's move on seven is done order shipping to france or belgium looking at the orders tables there is a field called ship country write a query that shows the order id customer id and the ship country for the orders where the ship country is either france or belgium okay this is pretty straightforward too so there is an orders table and I'm going to be there is a field ship called ship country. Uh, I'm going to be needing order ID, customer ID, and ship country. Okay. Order ID, customer ID, ship country. Okay, oh the title. Forgot. Orders shipping to France or Belgium. There we go. So I guess I'm going to be doing a select statement. And I'm going to be using order ID, customer ID. 
order ID, customer ID, and ship country. Ship country. I guess from the orders table, yes. Orders. From the orders table. And I'm going to be filtering this. How? From the shipping country is either France or Belgium. A where clause, shipping country is uh, is either France equals to equals to France or you know what I can actually use a, a, a NIN keyword and just list the countries like this and Belgium there we go that should that should do it there we go I got 96 orders let's see okay inspector results 96 orders okay nice now order ship into any country in Latin America. Okay. Before that, let's save all this to the repo. Okay. Oops. Oh, I I messed up. Okay. See that? Oh no. There we go. Never mind. Okay. Order shipping. There we go. Fine. Get luck. Let's check out. Oh, nope. Take one line. There we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Now, number nine. order shipping to any country in Latin America. Now, instead of just wanting to return all the orders from France or Belgium, we want to show all the orders from any Latin American country. But we don't have a list of Latin American countries in a table in the Norwin database. So we are going to just use this list of Latin American countries that happen to be in the orders table, okay? Uh, and we have Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, and Venezuela. It doesn't make sense to use multiple OR statements anymore. Use the IN statement. Well, I, I did that. I did use the IN statement before, so... I guess it's the same query, just with this specific list of countries. Brazil, Mexico, Argentina, Venezuela, okay. So it's basically the same query as before. I guess I'm going to be using here Brazil, Wales, Mexico, Argentina. Okay. There we go. And there we go. I did have 173 records. Okay. Let's see. Okay, 173. Perfect. Okay. Oh, wait. I forgot the title. Order shipping to any country in Latin America. There we go. And let's add this to the repo. Let's add this to the repo. There we go. Okay, what else? Number 10. Employees in order of, of age. Okay. Let's see. Number 10. Let's 
in orders of age what do i have to do okay for all employees in the employees table show the first name last name title and birth date order the results by birth date so we have the oldest employees first okay let's try this okay for all employees in the employees table I need to show first name, last name, and title and birth date. Okay, let's do that. Uh, select. Oh no. Select. And let's list the fields. In my case, it's going to be first name, last name, title. Okay. First name, last name, title. And I, I guess it's uh, birth date. Birth date. Yes, uh, from the employees, from the employees table, uh, there is a where clause here, no, uh, just that, I need to just order by build date, and that should be it, order by build date, and there we go. The oldest one is uh, on the 55 year, 66, 70, and the youngest is at the bottom, I guess. Uh, someone born in 1984. Okay, so it's already done. Let's add this to the repo. Okay. This is actually really entertaining for me at least. I wonder if, I guess, uh, I I'm not going to see anyone down here on, at this uh, at this time on the video, I guess. <laughs> but I find this very amusing for myself at least. Okay, let's get going. Number eleven, showing only the date with a date time field. Okay. In the output of the query above, showing the employees in order of birth date, we see the time of the birth date field. Uh, yes, uh, it's true, it's zero, zero, zero. So uh, there is not really a time here, okay? Which we don't want. Show only the date portion of the birth date field. Now, this is something I don't really remember how to do. Uh, let's read the hand, use the convert function to convert the beer date column originally a date time column to a date column okay let's do that first let's copy the query from the previous one i forgot the title i always do i guess uh, let's go back 11 showing only the date with a date time field Okay, so I guess I should be, I'm going to be working here on the beer date field because it's pretty much the same field. I'm just going to be removing this, uh, the, the time part on the beer date because it's not really required. So I don't remember, but I believe it's convert and between parentheses, I need to say, date maybe date comma and the field x uh, okay here it says an x data type an expression i guess that's it i i want to convert to a date this field okay so and there we go it just worked nice i didn't have to read the documentation on this one i was afraid i have to never mind Okay, so let's just uh, add this to the repo too. Okay. 11. The next one. Uh, 12. Employees full name. Show the first name and last name columns from the employees table and then create a new column called full name. 
showing first name and last name joined together in one column with a space in between. Okay, spectral results. First name, last name, and this is a calculated sphere because I'm concatenating these two previous spheres into one, separated by a space. Okay, seems pretty simple enough. Okay, let's see employee's full name. Okay. Okay, and next is a select statement. Uh, is all the fields? I don't remember. Uh, no, showing first last name. Okay, let's see first name, last name, and my calculated field is going to be the concatenation. I wonder. Yes. Concat and a series of strings. Okay. I'm going to concatenate and the strings are going to be the first name, comma. I'm going to be separating with a space, comma, and the last name. Uh, this is going to. Okay, let's, let's do from the employee stable. Now, this is not going to work uh, very well because. The name of the field is not is going to be anonymous. So I'm going to be adding a an alias as this field, uh, this anonymous field here is going to be known as I don't remember full name. Okay, this is going to be full name. And now the anonymous field is going to be called full name. Uh, we just did it. Pretty simple indeed. Let's add it to the repo. The employee's name, full name. Okay. There we go. Let's move on. 13. Order details amount per line item. Order details amount per line item. Let's try that. Order details is okay. Uh, amount per line item. Okay. I don't really know what it wants. Just from the title. Let's see. In the order details table, we have the fields, unit price, and quantity. Create a new field, total price, that multiplies these. Okay, that's another calculated field. Yet instead of concatenating the strings, I'm going to multiply two amounts. Okay, two together. We'll ignore the discount field for now. In addition, show the order ID, product ID, unit price and quantity, order by order ID and product ID. Okay, this is a seems complicated, but it's really not. So let's do it. The, the way I'm going to be doing this is by dividing the problem. Most things in programming depend on that. Simple programs, you can actually do it uh, in a single step. Uh, I guess from here on onward, I'm going to be explaining my thought process for every exercise. Because so far, these are pretty simple statements. But now, I guess uh, we are going into the realm of dividing the problem. Okay, so let's, let's keep going then. Uh, in the order details table, we have the fields, unit price, and quantity. Create a new field, total price that multiplies this. Okay, let's do that. The orders, order details. Okay, so select. Um, let's let's do an asterisk first. Run order details. Okay, if I run this, I can actually see all the fields. Okay. So what I'm going to be doing here is first I'm going to filter out by the I'm going to be adding the fields. Uh, in the order that we have the fields, unit price and quantity. Okay, let's show those first. Unit price and quantity. And I'm removing all the all the other ones. So what do I need to do now? 
create a new field total price that multiplies this okay simple enough comma and i'm going to multiply those what i do is this unit price asterisk what are you and multiplying the quantity and obviously i'm going to have an anonymous field with the result this is the anonymous field i'm going to add an alias to that anonymous field and it's going to be called uh, total price everything together i run this <coughs> okay total price is, is, is all it's done too many zeros for my liking i may like to format this with a uh, two digits uh, after the, the decimal point but never mind that okay uh, what else that's the and i doing this step by step as you can actually see okay we'll ignore the discount field for now in addition now this is after show the order id product id unit price and quantity okay let's do this first i'm going to be doing this first before ordering anything so i need order id product id and i leave the two other fields just as it is order id and product id order id and product id i add in this to the query and there we go and now the final part of this exercise is order by order id and product id i'm having two filters here uh, this is a pretty simple exercise too I'm going to use an order by, oops, order, an order by clause, and I'm going to be ordering by order ID first. And let's try it like this. And as you can see, all the orders, all the records are going to be, the by order ID are going to be together here. But on the product ID, I'm going to uh, be having a little bit messed up things here. So then, by product ID. And that's it. It's going to be order. The, the, smallest one, the smallest one is going to be up. And the biggest number is going to be down. The same for the product ID. Okay. There we go. Let's add this to the repo. Okay. There we go. And let's move on. Okay. And the result should be two thousand one hundred and fifty-five. Let's let's check out. Uh huh. It doesn't say here. Let me see. Yes, it's actually correct. Okay. Let's move on. To the number 14 how many customers how many customers do we have in the customers table show only one value only and don't rely on getting the record count at the end of the result set okay how many customers okay So this is a simple one. I could just do this. What what the book is referring to from the from the customers table. If I just do this right here, I'm going to be getting the number of rows and it's 91. So I'm getting 91 uh, customers. But he doesn't want this. So what I'm going to do is something called, I guess an aggregate function is called. I'm going to count how many records are there in this table. So I'm going to be doing this. The function is called count and this function uh, is going to count how many records of these fields here are going to be found. Okay, it's going to be an anonymous 
uh, an anonymous field here. I wonder if it's asking me to put a name on it. Uh, let's put this name here. This alias total customers. Yeah, why not? So this uh, function is going to be known as total customers. And there we go, 91. Okay, let's move on. Let's add this to the repo first. There we go, and move on. Okay. When was the first order? Okay, number 15. Okay, so the first order, I guess, let's, let's fix this in a steps. Let's do a select all the fields from the order, from the, I guess is, I have two tables here, but I'm going to be betting on the orders tables. Okay. It said, it's asking me for show a list of countries. Oh no, wait, 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 no, 15, okay. Show the table, show the date of the first order ever made in the orders table. Okay, it's the orders table. First order, it has to be this one here. So I guess I can do this in several ways. I can say, let me show me the, I wonder if it's, the minimum date, the smallest date. So instead of asterisk, I'm going to be saying order date. I see an order date. The smallest order date from the orders table. And I'm going to be calling this field, how is it going to be called? First order, okay. Uh, as first order. And that should give me the same date. 407 2014 and 407 okay that's it i here i'm using another aggregate function called minimum or min and i passing as uh, as a parameter uh, i want this field the order date the minimum order date and get me a record with this and that's going to be called the first order this is when was the first order. Okay, so let's add this to the repo. Add it to the repo. And there we go, let's move on. Number 16, countries where there are customers. Show a list of countries where the Norwegian company has customers. Okay, expect that results. Argentina, Austria, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Denmark, Finland. Okay, those are whatever. Hint, you will want to use the group by clause for this query. Hmm, so that's a really good hint, actually. Okay, countries where there are customers. Okay. So, this is another one that I'm going to be solving in pieces. I need to show a list of countries where the Norwegian company has customers. I wonder if there is a country table. Categories, customers, employees, order, no. Uh, there must be a clients table. Shippers and suppliers. No. A list of countries has customers. There is a customers table. Okay. Select everything from the customers table. There we go. So here must be country of origin, something like that. Country. There we go. Some countries are actually uh, 
like the UK are abbreviated USA okay so let's see I'm getting this but now I'm going to add a group clause group by country I wonder what this does oh, wait what it says it's invalid in the select list because I'm using the asterisk I cannot group by country and not use this field so let's just show the country field and group by the country there we go we have all the all the records with the countries where we have clients okay so I actually showing all the clients rows but grouping them by uh, by the by the country if I choose for example account and I count the amount of countries or records here I going to get a, an error here I guess here I'm showing how many clients do I have but I'm getting ahead of myself probably this is going to be a future exercise it's, it is mess like it never mind let's see. let's go let's keep going let's add it to the repo this is going to be a really long video actually okay so uh, introductory problems here okay uh, number 17 oops 17 Yes, uh, okay contact titles for customers show a list of all the different values in the customers table for the contact titles also include account for each control title this is similar in concept to the previous question countries where there are customers except we now want account for each contact title okay Okay, so instead of countries, I'm going to be using contact title and I'm going to be repeating what I did before. Okay, so first, let's copy this previous query. Oh, wait. Actually, well, contact title for customers. Okay. Okay, so this is the, the previous query. As we remember here we're getting the the list of countries but now i'm going to be using contact title and now this query is going to give me all the contact titles if i want to know how many contact titles contact titles there are i'm going to add a, a, a new field here and it's going to be counting count how many contact titles there are on this uh, on every one of these okay since i'm using the same field i i don't need to add it to add a new field on the group by clause i'm going to be moving this down here so it can be read easier and i'm going to be adding an alias it's called total contact title okay total content title there we go so i'm getting i did the same thing before uh, but with a different uh, field anyway so this is we have 10 accounting managers two assistant sales agents one assistant sales representative six marketing assistants and you get the idea okay let's get let's add this to the repo and let's move on okay let's move on 18 products with associated supplier names we like to show for each product the associated supplier show the product id product name and the company of the supplier sort the resolver product id this question will introduce what may be a new concept the join clause in SQL the join clause is used to join 
two or more relational database tables together in a logical way. It is a data model of the relationship between products and suppliers. Okay, let's see. Oh my God, this picture sucks. Never mind. So we had two tables, and uh, the two are uh, the two tables are uh, something called relationship between tables. Uh, this is why the uh, the that the SQL databases are called relational databases. It's because of this, because one or uh, two or three or more tables can be can, can have a relationship. I'm not going to get into that because it's a really complex and sophisticated uh, subject. But what you need to know now is that these two tables are uh, they they are re uh, there is a relationship between these two tables, and it works like this: we have a products table and a supplier table. And as you can see here, in the products table, I had several fields, uh, the product ID, product name, and as you can see with this line here, the supplier ID is, rela is related to the supplier ID on the supplier's table. This is the key here, uh, literal key, actually. A foreign key on the product key is the supplier ID and this. So, okay. So let's get back a little bit. Uh, products with associated supplier names. So, what are we going to do? So they are asking us to show for each product the associated supplier. Show the product ID, product name, and the company name of the supplier. Sort the result by product ID. Okay, first I'm going to begin. Uh, I'm going to show uh, each product. Oops, there we go. Let's begin with a simple select. I'm going to select everything from the products table. Nothing fancy. So I guess this is an entire list of every product that the company is selling. Okay. How many units I do have in a stock. Uh, a lot of information here. The name of the product is important. Okay. First step is done. This is the list of the products. I need to show the product ID, product name, and the company name of the supplier. As you can see here, I have the product ID and the product name, but there is not, uh, the name of the supplier is nowhere to be found on this table. Yet, we have a supplier ID field here, as you can see here. I'm going to use this supplier ID field to create a, a join and get the actual name. First, Let's do another exercise first. Select all the fields from the suppliers table. And here I'm going to find the company name. See? So this is the data I need. The company name. Okay? Oops, I, I fuck it up. Okay, never mind. So this is the company name. This is what this is the information I need. But the information is in another table. These two tables are related using the supplier ID field inside the product uh, table, and the same field can be found. Oh, wait. Okay, and next, we are going to use the supplier ID on the suppliers table to create a link on the query. So, what I'm going to do. Let's create a select statement and let's see what fields are, are required to be shown. Product ID, product name, and company name. Okay. Product ID, product name, and company name. From the products table. And I'm going to create a join here. I'm going to be joining the two tables, one next to the other. 
and I'm going to be doing that here. Uh, I'm going to be using the suppliers. Oh wow, auto completion, nice. Now let me read this. The suppliers table is going to be known as uh, I don't really like to use aliases here yet because I want this. Supplier, I well, produce those supplier. Okay, there we go. Suppliers, there we go. So, this red light test, uh, I want to join with the suppliers table, and the condition to join then is going to be that the supplier ID field inside the product's ID must be the same as the supplier ID field on the suppliers table. So if I run this, I get the name of the product and the company name. The company name does not belong into the products table. That's why we need to do a join here. The company name belongs to the suppliers table. And these two tables are joined using uh, something called Forenki. Well, so far so good. And we are getting into the intermediate difficulty problems for my liking I guess so let's remove this this is not a simple exercise you don't really understand this one it's not a big deal uh, I get uh, it took me a while to understand how joints actually work I hope that if you are seeing this you get uh, curious enough to research it for you by yourself but this is how it's done at least for this in particular exercise. Okay, let's add it to the repo. Okay, let's add this supplier name. Let's move on. Okay, that's the better result. Again, 19. Uh, orders and the shipper that was used. Okay, what do we need to do? We like to show a list of the orders that were made, including the shipper that was used. Show the order ID, order date, date only and company name of the shipper and sort by order ID. In order to not show all the orders, there is more than 800. Show only those rows with an order ID of less than, uh, it gave me a 10,270. Okay, it's okay. Better results. And first create a SQL statement that shows only the rows and columns you need from the orders table. Then work on adding the join to the shipper table and the necessary field from that table. This data model should help you visualize the join between the orders table and the shipper table. There we go. So we have a similar thing here with the orders and the shippers. Hint. One thing to know for this problem is that when you join two tables, the field that's joined on does not necessarily need to have the same name. Usually they do. However, in this case, the sheet via field in the orders table is joined to the shipper ID in shippers. We get back. Uh, here's the link. On the shippers table, we have the shipper ID. Uh, yet on the orders table, we don't get a shipper ID field, we get the ship via. Okay, okay, fine. Is something else? Congratulations, you have completed the intro. To okay, so this is the last problem of the video. Nice. Okay, the spectre. Okay, let's see. We like to show a list of orders that were made, including the shipper that was used. Show the order ID, order date. Okay, let's begin from the very bottom to the. We are going to list all the orders. Okay, I'm going to select, select, 
everything from the orders table there we go and nothing fancy okay this is the first step we're showing everything from the orders table yeah if i scroll here i looking at the sheet via uh, field here and here is my identification number for the shippers table okay next step okay i'm going to show the order id the order date and i'm going to be showing only the date only and the company name of the shipper and i'm going to sort it by id so on this phrase there is like three steps so we are going to be doing this slowly okay the first thing i need to do i i just listed the the orders okay okay i'm going to be including the shipper that was used but before that i'm going to be showing these fields first order id and order date because those fields already belong to the orders table that i'm querying right now so that's going to be easy so instead of asterisk i'm going to be uh, it, it was order id i don't remember order id and order date okay order id and order date and as you can see here i'm using these two fields here order id and order date and now from order date i'm going to be showing only the date so if we remember on the previous exercise i don't remember which one we use a convert function that requires two values as parameters the first one is going to be the data type i want to convert into in this case it's going to be date and separated by a comma the field i'm going to be converting uh, that into a date okay if i execute this i'm getting an anonymous field here and this is going to be my date uh, the field is called order date so i'm going to add an alias here as order date okay so far so good we are going slow but we are doing this right and that's the important thing uh, what if you are building a house would you rather find someone that builds it the quickest the fastest or the better house so i some people ask me sometimes is this useful to type faster if you type faster in programming i will say that you should probably type slower and it's because of this going fast is doesn't mean it's going to be good okay so convert date order date okay so so we are getting the order id and the order date just the date so we are halfway there now i need to add the shipper field with the name of the shipper so okay it says and company name of the shipper and sort by okay let's add the company name i'm going to be moving this from a statement here and i'm going to be doing a join here okay since the well actually i'm going to try something here i wonder comma company no it's not auto completing because i know uh, uh, the company name field does not belong to the order table that belongs to the shipper table so i'm going to be doing a join join and i'm going to look for the shipper table here and it's actually helping me to have to complete this. I'm going to remove this alias because I don't find it useful on this particular case. The query is not large enough to justify that. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to put the uh, shippers, the shippers table, there we go. So I'm going to be joining the orders table so now since we just joined the shippers table with the orders table if i try to add the field company name i'm going to found it i'm going to find it here 
because the shipper stable is already joined on this query. So the company name, I execute, and there we go. And the company name field comes from the shippers table. The company name field does not belong to the orders table. That's why I need to do this join. In order for me to be able to execute this query, I need in the data definition language, uh, I need that the relationship to be defined explicitly or that the data uh, plays along even though there is no relationship. You will be amazed with how many uh, queries with joins I have to do that there are no actual relationship between tables. And this happens a lot. So don't be surprised if you don't see a, a natural relationship between, between two tables for this to work. This actually can work. Never mind, there is or not a natural relationship. The fact that you get a relationship uh, done between your tables will will make sh uh, will allow the database engine to be sure that this actually uh, this actually works all the time. Because if you don't define a relationship between two tables, you are going to be having an issue when you add a shipper on the shippers table with some random number that doesn't actually uh, belongs to any order or, or vice versa. You may have an order and you put the number 999 and there is no shipper with the 999 ID on the shippers table. Uh, yet the database is going to allow you to put that number there. The, the use of creating a relationship between these two tables is for is for the database uh, management software or the engine uh, to allow you to to say hey if you want to introduce inside the order table inside the shipper via field the 999 value is uh, the database engine is going is not going to allow you to do that because it's not finding that value in the shippers table it's basically a fail safe uh, mechanism to avoid you committing stupid mistakes. So that's it. Okay, moving on. Um, I'm showing the company name of the shipper. And last, uh, I'm going to need to order by order ID. Okay. Let's, uh, let's move down here. Order by, oops, there we go. Order ID. There we go. So the order ID is this one here. And as you can see, it's uh, 48, 49, 50, and so on. That's it. Let's see if there is something else. In the order not show, in order to not show all the orders, there is more than 800, show only those with an order ID of less than and this number. So after the join, let's add a WHERE clause. Order ID is less than, and what number was it? 10 to There we go. So with this WHERE clause here, I'm limiting the amount of records to be shown because, let me show this, okay. There, there we go. I only show in 22 records now for a total of 800 and something. So there we go. I guess that's it. Okay. And that's it. We just, I just finished this. Yay. Congratulations. You had completed the introductory problems. Any questions or feedback on the problems, hints or answers, I'd like to hear from you. Please email me at feedback at sqlpracticeproblems.com. It's been fun so far. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. Intermediate problems. I'm going to be uh, solving this later in another video. I hope you have enjoyed this quest uh, of me learning to code. And it's not been easy so far especially on the setup process, but uh, I think we're doing fine. So thank you for coming. 
and I hope to see you later. Goodbye.